All right. Well, Hugo called me, uh, well, I don't know, a few weeks ago and asked me if I could be here today. Uh, this is a little loud, but I'll fix it in a minute. Put it way down here. All right. So uh, how many people are here this afternoon? Okay. About almost everybody. That's pretty good. Pretty good response after lunch and everything. Uh, so uh, we're going to talk about how to build a, a company, how to build a construction company. And most of you already have a business, so we're going to do more than talk about how to build it, but how to take it from where it is to make it better. And I'm going to turn this down just a hair. Sounds like it's really loud. Mike, hello, 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 hello. That's probably better. A little better, y'all hear me? Okay. So anyway, uh, every time I walk by there, it's going to beep at me. Okay, so today we're going to talk about uh, how to do a business plan, how to, how to build a business, steps to success. Uh, I'm a, a contractor originally from Southern California, building co concrete industrial and office buildings. Not too much residential. I know most of you do a lot of residential work. I do have uh, a lot of uh, background in that, though. Uh, I've uh, worked with a lot of contractors one-on-one. So I started my company in 1977 after graduating from the University of Southern California in civil structural engineering, you know, USC is number one in uh, five sports last year, won the NC2A, you all knew that, right? Number one in the nation, most NCA2A, two, two anybody care? Water polo, women's track, tennis, badminton. Okay, anyway. Poker, right, and making money. Okay, so I graduated in engineering and I started my company I was t uh, after working for a while. Uh, well, at 27, I was up to about 50 million, 150 employees by the time I was 35. And I had a great, great run. I uh, stopped building in 2010 uh, and started, uh, uh, and I, I've been speaking for about 20 plus years. This is my 22nd year here at World of Concrete. I did programs yesterday, I'm doing, doing a couple later on. And uh, Hugo called, and thanks for inviting me. And uh, so today I'm going to, to spend some time talking about uh, how to build a great business, how to have a great business plan, know what you want, achieve your goals, make more money, have more time off. Uh, basically, why are you in business? You're in business for the business to deliver what you want, right? Most of us in the room, business owners and managers, who are uh, business owners? Pretty much everybody. I know we have a few managers, et cetera. And uh, so uh, I'm talking to business owners and executives who run the business. And uh, over the last uh, 10 years, I've been uh, writing books, coaching, consulting, and uh, uh, I, I coach a lot of contractors. I have 50 uh, plus contractors uh, on, a, on retainer that call me all the time. I go see them every week or every two weeks. I travel around and go to their office for a few days and I work on their, you know, what's working, what's not working, what do we need to fix to make it better. And uh, I've got contractors from 1 million to 100 million. All different sizes. And the beauty of being a coach, I get right in. The first thing we look at their P&L, we look at their org chart, we look at who's working for who, who's, what's working, what's not working, what's working out in the field, productivity, supervision, project management, foreman, general superintendent, whatever you've got. And uh, we look at sales and marketing. We kind of dig in. And over the years of doing this, I've learned what really works. So I created what I call the Biz Builder Blueprint. Uh, which is a, basically a one-page business plan. Obviously, it has a lot of background behind it. But I created a business model that works for contractors. So I'm going to try to zip through it as fast as I can. We're supposed to try to get out of here before 4 today. I hear there's some refreshments later, so we have a, we have a hard deadline. So I'm going to try to get out a little early. But, you know, uh, I, I do this program, I've done it several times, as a two-and-a-half-day workshop. So we're going to try to cover it in about two and a half hours, all right? So, so that's the goal here, is just give you the highlights and the low life, not the low lights, the highlights and the, and the highlights, right? And so uh, when we're all done, uh, I've got a few books up here. All my templates are, on, are, are available. You just got to send me an email and I'll send you the templates. Just type in BHA and I'll know what to send you. Uh, anything you want from me, just let me know, all right? So I just thought I'd start with an email I got today. Oh, one other thing, I have a newsletter, a management newsletter for contractors, and I have about eight or 9,000 names on it, and here's an email I got from one of my readers. Hi, my name is Tracy. My husband is a general contractor here in California. He's had his license since 2000. We need help desperately. We are not organized whatsoever. Our bidding needs help. We can't make any money. 
and we need help with every part of our business. In fact, it's a miracle we still have one. We are ready for a change. Please call. So what do I do? Do I call them? They have no money. Should I call them? Do the math. Anyway, that's like you when you're trying to sell a job, right? Do you have any money? First question. How are you going to pay, right? So it's the same question. So anyway, I get these calls and emails all the time. And uh, what I find is people don't really have a plan. They, they know how to do the work really well, but they don't know how to run a business. They don't know how to manage their money. They don't know how to, uh, uh, you know, even read a P&L. They don't even know their job costs. They work really, really hard and don't make enough money. Uh, you know, they make, they're working 70 hours a week or more, have no life, car, truck payments. You know, their goal is lifetime truck payments, you know, and they're on goal track. And, uh, you know, they're really not making enough money. They actually could make more money working some, somewhere else as a superintendent or a project manager than working for themselves and working 100 hours a week, right? So what do I do? We've got to get to the next level. And there's different levels of success. And to me, it's not all about the money, but the money helps. You, the more money you have, the more, the more money you make, the more better people you can hire, train, motivate, and inspire to stay with your company and do a good job. If you're always scraping for dollars, it's hard. It's hard life. And uh, once you hit one million, two million, you reach a plateau. Then we hit three or four million in sales, and you hit another plateau. Then you get to six or eight, and you hit another plateau. And I know some of you are doing several tens of millions of dollars. So everybody's at a different level, but it's the same. When I go meet with a contractor that does, uh, you know, maybe has three crews, maybe does three, four, five million, they have the same exact problems the $100 million contractor has with 300 employees and they've been in business 70 years. It's unbelievable because I always walk away, we create a list of what needs to improve and then we start working on it. Guess what? The list is always the same. I know what you guys want and what you need. So what I talk about works, so you can do it or not do it. Uh, if you want to continue to struggle, if you're struggling, just keep doing what you're doing because your business is currently designed to give you the results that you currently are achieving. You know, you're not going to get any better just working harder. You've got to do something different, right? So I put a couple words up here. What do you want first? We'll start with that. What do you want? And then what are you going to do about it to get it? Because you know what you want. Most of us want something different. Could be better, different, more valuable, more money, more time off, more freedom, better management team, whatever it is. Or it could, whatever you want, okay, how do I get it? If you continue to just work harder doing what you've always done, guess what? You're, you're, the results aren't going to change. In fact, it's going to get worse. Because smarter and smarter contractors are coming into the business to compete against you, right? Okay, so that's my little uh, motivational kick in the fanny start. Uh, uh, so, so as we start here, you know, you're all at World of Concrete. You're at the Basement Health Association. Why are we here? Uh, we're here to learn new things. But the key word is to implement. Okay, there's a work, uh, workbook uh, I printed up for everybody. We're just going to zip through. We're not going to hit every page, but let's start on page three for starters and just continue on see how we're doing for time. I'm going to skip through some of the material. I, I tried to squeeze it all in, but I, I, I'm already behind. What else is new? It's kind of like a contractor, right? I'm already over budget and behind schedule. So why'd you, why'd you in, a, attend? Obviously you want to improve. You want to, you're investing. You want to get a return on your investment, just like when we talk about money. You want to get a return on your investment, right? You build a crew, you want to get a return on your investment. So we're here, we're learning, we're helping each other, we're working with our peers in the, in the BHA. Okay, we're at World of Concrete, lots of seminars, lots of trade show events. What are you gonna do different when you get home? That's the key. Uh, and, and I want you to think about yourself as a coach, as a head coach. You're not a business owner, you're not a manager, you're a head coach. You're a winning coach. You're Bill Belichick, you're, you're uh, Pete Carroll, you're one of the winning coaches. Uh, you're Tommy Lasorda, you're, you know, the, whoever the Alabama coach is, what's his name? Saban, who I don't like, but he's still good at what he does. Uh, but, uh, you know, your head coach, oh, you're the 33-year-old head coach of the Rams, 33 years old. I did a program yesterday on uh, uh, moving leaders to the next level, building leaders, and everybody in the room can't find any help. Well, they got him already working for you. The guy, head coach of the Rams is 33. Well, you don't have to be 50 to become a superintendent. Let's 
let's think about who we already got. But anyway, so, so what does a head coach do? What, think about yourself. You all played sports. Anybody play sports? I played uh, uh, wire polo, University of Southern California. Uh, we're in the top two in the country every year. And uh, tried out for the Olympics, et cetera. But, but uh, back in the day, you know, I had different coaches. And who are the good ones? What do they do? What, you've all played sports, most of us here. What do good coaches do? And what does a professional NBA, NFL coach do? Number one, they motivate. And they have a vision. So they know where they're going. So that's the first thing we're going to do today is figure out what you want. Then we're going to figure out how to get it. So what do you want? They know exactly what they want. They want to improve from last year to next year. And in order to do that, what do they have to do? They have to have great playbooks, systems and strategies, processes and procedures, that everybody follows the playbook. They don't let some crew do it one way and another and another. Everybody follows the playbook. And to make sure they do that, they have ongoing training. They train more than they play. Golfers hit balls all day long to play four hours, four days a week. Right? Football, four or five days of practice, you play one game for an hour, you know? So they have training. They have a bevy of coaches, assistant coaches, project managers, superintendents, foremen, who are fully trained and fully authorized to make decisions and they're accountable to achieve results. That means they know the score. They know where they are. The question for you is, do you do you share your job cost results with your foreman and your crew leaders? Because if you don't, they're doing their best, but they're not going to hit the goal if they don't have a clue what it is. So you got to think like a coach. What else do they do? They don't go out in the field and call plays. Notice Pete Carroll. His play caller is right to his right over here calling the plays. Pete doesn't even carry the playbook with him. There's the playbook. This guy right here has got the playbook, and there's the offensive and defensive coordinator. What's Pete's role? Motivate, lead, vision, encourage, inspire, and make sure his, his coaches are doing their job. So think about yourself as a business owner and manager and a leader. I want you to change your hat and put on your coaching hat. What do I need to do to build a better company, to win the Super Bowl? That's really it. What do, you, what do I need to do to win the Super Bowl? What do I need to do to be the best net profit in this room, in this association? What do the leading companies do that I'm not that I should be doing? What am I too busy doing to make any money? Because we get so hung up doing the doing to doing and telling and telling and telling and scheduling everybody and ordering material and making all the decisions for everybody and we never get off the field to grow the business. So I want you to think about your role as we move forward. So you can't call the same place. So, it, so as we leave today, you've got a choice what plays you're going to call. You're going to keep calling the same plays with the same player and the same results, or are you seeking better results? Well, that's why we invest our time here. We want to get better, right? So I got to call better, better plays, bold plays, new plays, crazy plays, new ideas, flea flickers, whatever it takes to win the game. Will you call to take your business to the next level? We got to get organized and systemized. We got to grow and we've got to make better margins. So I don't know what your margins are. You can do better. I don't know what your sales are, you can do better. Now I'm not saying sales is, is the goal. The goal is what? What's your vision? What do you want from your company? The, the reason you own a business is to give the owners what they want. What do you want? Work 90 hours a week and make no money? Or do you want to work 30 hours a week, have a great team, and be able to take Fridays off, Saturday, Sunday off, go to Florida once a month in the summer or the winter, and enjoy your business. Let the business deliver to you rather than you tell the business what to do. So it all starts with your vision of what you want. And so what happens is we get busy. We run in place. We do things ourselves. We, we make too many decisions. We don't delegate. We don't let go of control. We micromanage. We, we schedule all the crews. We tell everybody what to do. We check on everybody all the time. We do all the things that managers do that don't know how to lead and coach a team because that's how we do it. It doesn't mean it's right, it's just unfortunately the reality of what happens. So the more we do, the less we make. The more you do, the more you currently do and control means your business stock is stuck at the level of what you can do and control. You can't make any more money because you're already maxed. You can't make any more, make any more money with better crews and better sales. Because you're stuck at the level you're at. So we run in place 
and we hope the economy runs us down the river and the phone rings and we ho our, our marketing and sales program is hope and pray we get enough leads and we close enough deals, right? Yeah, we're proactive, we do sales, but, but you know, really we hope, they, hope we get some calls. So we don't have a plan. So what's your plan? Uh, you know, if you think about, here's how I think. What's my overhead? My overhead's uh, half a million a year. Okay, so how much money do I want to make? I want to make uh, 250 grand. So let's round it off to 300. So my overhead's 500. That includes my salary and all my, my office staff. Does include my field. Those are job costs. So just my office overhead's 500 grand. I want to make 300 on top of it. So that's 800 grand. All right, so if my average margin on my jobs is 20%, how much work do I have to do? I've got to bring in 800 grand divided by 0.2 is a million six. It's just math. I've got to do a million six. What's your average job size? Anybody, what's your average job size? 80, call it 10 grand, right? Divide a million six by 160 jobs. That's two, oh, I've got to get one every two days, right? So I've got to get them and I've got to do them. Now in order to get my jobs, how many do I have to propose on? One out of three? So now I'm up to 500 jobs I gotta make proposals on a year. That's two a day. It's just math. See how simple that is to figure out your marketing and sales plan, your business plan? How do you think? Just work harder and hope it gets better? I gotta know how many proposals and how many leads I've gotta get, I've gotta convert so many, I gotta track that. I gotta make sure I'm making my 30% or 20% or whatever I make gross and, and you know, not net gross and divide it out and I, 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 that's what I gotta do. So if I wanna make a half a million, just do the math. If I wanna make a quarter million, just do the math, right? It's just math, so I'll show you the formula later, but, but that's how I think. What do you want? How much money you wanna make? What do you want your business to do for you? So, uh, you know, perfect clock, looks like that. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Anybody ever feel like that? Busy, busy, busy. come to a conference like this and we go, we, hey, how's it going? Oh man, we're busy. Just turn to someone, how busy are you? Busy, just go busy, 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 busy. Come on, this is the audience part. Everybody's like, now turn back and say, how much money are you making? So that's a hard one because I don't care how busy you are if you're not making any money. To me, that makes me want to throw up. I had some guys yesterday come up after I did my financial session. I just wanted to slap them. Oh, we do 10 million. We're like huge, you know? Uh, well, how much, what was you on your tax return last year? 10 million, no, no, how much net profit did you pay tax on? 80 grand. I said, 80 grand on 10 million? Why don't you just go get a job? You don't have all that stress and you can go home. And he says, then oh, I got receivables over 5 million. I, don't you try to collect your money? What do you work for bad customers who don't pay? You don't use this PayX, uh, what was it called? Pay, pay, you don't use Pazers? What are you, an idiot? I, I basically said, what are you, stupid? If I was your boss, I would fire you, but I can't because you're your own boss. So anyway, I got all upset. He slapped me and kicked me. All right, so there we go. So um, when I started my uh, company, uh, I, I built my, started my business, that's my boat there. You kind of get the concept there. It's amazing how low, how, much, how busy you can be by focusing on price and focusing on revenue. And it's easy to get busy. Just lower your price. Just, you know, cut your price. It's easy. Every time you cut your price, you've got to do more sales to make the same amount of money. So it just means you've got to work harder to make the same. The cheaper you are, the more you got to do to make any money. It's just math, right? And so, uh, I don't know about you, but uh, I, I'm busy, busy. Uh, what opportunities am I missing? I'm missing that. When I'm so busy, I can't go after the good jobs and the good referrals. When's the last time you took one of your best clients to lunch and said thanks? You know, maybe you've got a builder in town or a, a realtor in town or somebody, a banker who refers you a lot of work. When's the last time you took him to lunch and said thanks or took him to a ball game? Well, I'm too busy working on cheap work to take my good customers to lunch, right? It's crazy. It's crazy because we get so busy, we miss all the opportunities and uh, we're, we're too busy working to make any money. All right, so, you know, it's easy to be the low bid construction company and do everything yourself. There you are going to Home Depot. When's the last time you guys all went to Home Depot? Hopefully it was like five years ago, right? Anybody here go to Home Depot last week? Yeah, well that's good. I know the rest of you are lying, you won't tell me. How many of you went to Staples on the way home, pick up some stuff? I know you did. You're all lying. Why are you going? 
Why, why don't you have people going for you? Would you rather you, who are supposed to bring in $2 million a year, which is 1000 bucks an hour, you're doing $20, $10 work, wasting all your time going to Home Depot. There you are. There's your, there's your self-portrait. So anyway, hey, I've been there. I've done it. Uh, my dad was a mobile home park developer. I wanted to be, always wanted to be a real estate developer. I love that. In fact, here's our family portrait. I was like father, like son. There it is. But he gave me the drive, the entrepreneurial drive. So I always wanted to start my own business. I wanted to, you know, somehow step out on my own. Uh, how many of you said years ago, uh, when I grow up, I want to be in the basement? Oh, I misspelled it, sorry. Uh, base, biz basement business. <laughs> uh, I did that this morning. I, anyway, I was listening to the news and doing it at the same time. And uh, how many want to be in the basement business? How many when you grew up? How'd you get in here? How many of you said, when I grow up, I want to be stressed out, overworked, underpaid, and have no life? And I made it. I've achieved my goal. Well, nobody does. We all know what we want. What's your vision? What's your vision? So, so we're, we are biz builders. We build things. We fix things. We create things. Many of you build the basements and fix the basements, whatever all you do, all sorts of services, some of you. We're, we're in the building business. And we've got to continue to build our business where it gets stuck at the level of you have no life. So that's what I want you to think about. I've got to continue taking risks. So what are some risks that we have to take? We have to hire people. We have to train people. We have to trust people. We've got to, but we've got to make good decisions. We can't just keep hoping. You know, one of my clients, I said, how's it going, uh, uh, Jason? Jason Coleman, California. Oh, man, I still can't find a project manager. We just grabbed another job. I don't know how I'm going to get it all done. I keep losing money because I can't get out there and make sure it happens. I said, well, are you running an ad? Well, not right now, but I did a few months ago. I still got the resumes in my corner of my desk. Would you call him back? No, it's too busy to call him back. He called me just the other day and said, I hired somebody. I said, keep looking. Probably he's not going to work out because you were so desperate. You hired anybody, right? And he goes, no, he's really good. Okay, well, let me know. Keep looking. Right? He's not, he didn't want to take any risk. And so we've got a strong vision and a mission. We're on a mission to build a great business for our family, our future, our community, our customers. But we have a, a vision to make money and have a life. The reason you're in business is to deliver what you want. So it always starts with what do you want and what are you going to do about it, right? So think about why you're in business. So in 19, uh, always growing, seeking a profit, improving change. Uh, build a business at work. So that, that's what I want you to think about. What do I have to do? What do I need to work on as, an invest, as a return on investment for today? Uh, and then, of course, we've got to uh, ask them, am I a biz builder? Am I, am I the right person? Or do I need to hire somebody to help me? Why are you in business? What's the purpose for your business? So I want you to think about it just for a minute here. Why are you in business? What's the purpose for your business? What's the one or two big things that really make you want to be in business? You know, that's what I got to think about. Why am I in business? What do I want to return on? I want to return on my time. I've got it. So what would be a perfect business for you? A perfect business. So years ago, I started my business. Back then, we wore a suit and tie every day to work as a project manager. Now, you know, you wear T-shirts or whatever you wear, shorts, and, uh, you know, your hat on backwards because you're cool. Even though it's, uh, you know, hot outside, you still wear a hat backwards. But anyway, uh, I started my business, and uh, I'm doing pretty good, and I'm getting this, I got this job. There's my truck. I had a used orange Datsun pickup truck. And uh, we start doing the grading, and I'm out there supervising, project manager. I'm everything. You know, I'm charging a low fee to build this thing for this lady, and I'm out there, superintendent, project manager, cleanup crew, go to the city, do it all. And then all of a sudden, uh, you know, going to Home Depot, like everybody here, and uh, it starts raining. So what do I do? I, I go... I go, you know, get a pump, go to the rail yard and get a pump. And I'm pumping all day and working all day. And I'm finally realized, you know, I'm a college grad. I'm an engineering major. What am I doing in the ditch? I'm definitely not getting rich. So I realized the more I do, the less I make. And so I felt like I, my head was stuck in the rut. And when your head's stuck in the rut or you're stuck in a truck, you can't make any bucks. And so think about what happens, uh, you know, when you're doing too much yourself. Uh, you can't get rich with your head in the ditch. So what do business owners want? I read a lot of articles. Uh, I'm in uh, several articles every month uh, uh, 
uh, magazines, Metal Construction News, uh, Masonry Magazine, uh, Construction Business Center, and about 10 other ones too, and online. So I write one or two articles a month. I've got over 300 articles out there over the last 10 years. So I get a lot of calls and emails, and I always say, what do you want? Why are you in business? That's, people, I've got a problem with I said, well, let's stop for a minute. What are you trying to accomplish here? What do you really want from your business? Um, and, you know, I just need to, you know, more. i got more. Well, so, so what do you really want? I want more. More of what? I want my business to what? I want my business to give me what I want. Well, what do you want? You know, I'm not going to continue this conversation and tell you, what do you want? Well, I want people who show up on time. Well, um, is that going to solve your problem? No. What do you really want? I don't want to work so much. I want to make more money. Okay, let's get to that. How are we going to do that? We could have systems in place, right? So I don't know about you, but I want to become, if I want to be in the business, I want to have a best-in-class business. So I look on the uh, Construction um, Financial Management Association, the Basement Health Association, whatever other groups you're in, and you ask yourself, what do people make? What's the best in class? What's average? They do surveys. A lot of associations do surveys. And I see that the best in class of what I do makes 6, 8, 10% net profit. And I go, oh, okay, so I need to be at, eight, at 10 to be best. I'm only at 5. What do I have to do different to double my profit? Not double my sales, double my profit. I have to do business different. So I don't know about you, but I want to build a, a great management team that runs my business, whether I'm there or not. I want to have great customers and get lots of referrals. I want to have a great brand in the community. I want to have uh, great employees who want to work for me and refer their friends to work for me because we have a great place to work. Uh, what else do I want? I want to grow my equity and my wealth. And of course, I want freedom. Simple. I think we all want that, right? Plus or minus a few little things. Most people in business want the same. And the number two reasons people go into business is simple. Freedom, wealth. They think if they start their own business, they'll have a lot of, have a free, have a lot of freedom. How's that working? <laughs> and they'll build a lot of wealth. Well, wealth means you don't have to show up and you still get money. Wealth is when you own investments and they spit you out a return every month. Wealth is when you own an apartment building and you get to rent every month. And there's lots, that's wealth. Wealth is not working all day for, for not enough money. That's, uh, that's uh, hard. And most of us want to sell our businesses someday. The average construction company never sells. It's next to impossible to sell a construction company under 20 to 40 or 50 million. It's, it's impossible. You're selling a job. Nobody wants a job. So, so I've got to build wealth. Wealth will allow me freedom and happiness when I reach my elder years, right? So what am I going to do? Uh, and thank God I started building and buying industrial parks when I was 35 years old because I, I have several hundred tenants now. And I'm here having fun. This is what I love to do. You know, and I don't have to have a construction business to still have a great life. So it's fun. I mean, that's, the perp that's why you're in business. You're not in business to fix basements. That's the tool to allow you to get what you want, right? So anyway, it, it's real simple. The formula is, uh, what do you want? The formula is, uh, you know, what do you want? Money or do you want happiness? Money or happiness, there we go. So more, I'm not saying, you know, greed is the thing here. It's what, what money will allow you to do. You can give it to your charity, your church, whatever you want to do with it. You can give it to your kids. You can hire people to run your business so you can go invest. Whatever you want to do. It's not about being greedy. It's to be about you know, doing your best, right? And so uh, the key to success, I always say, is number one, you've got to know what you want. So I've got to have a clear picture, a target. I've got to know what I'm aiming at. So I, I always, you know, that's where we're going to start in a few minutes. What do I want, to, what do I want my business to do for me? And then follow up is... You know, how are we going to get there? What's your plan? How are we going to increase sales? How are we going to increase profitability? How are we going to hire better people? How are we going to uh, make sure people show up on time uh, on, on the jobs? What are we going to do when we get to the customers to, to get a referral? You know, how are we going to have a referral action plan? So all those are plans based on what do I want. I want a great business that gives me a return, a, a, a great staff to run the business so I don't have to micromanage it, et cetera, et cetera, as I've already said. So then what I have to have, number three, is I've got to have a tracking system. I've got to have a scorecard that tracks my progress. I've got to know my, where my numbers are every single day. Every day I've got to sit down with my accounting person who can actually do math and go through my numbers. You're in business for the numbers, not to do work. 
I don't care how busy you are if you're not making any money. That's like, how stupid are you, right? So the po point of your business is to, is to get a return on your investment of time, energy, and money. And so if you hire people, you've got to get a return on them. If you've got people you're not getting a return on, you need to replace them. If you're a head coach, how long would you let a, a, a runner who can't run, run? You know, if I've got a crew leader and never makes you any money, what are you doing? Would, would you keep them on the team? I mean, you train them, and if, you know, some people just shouldn't work for you, and some, some people just need training, right? So it's up to you. So I've got to have a scorecard. Everybody on your team needs a scorecard. Everybody on your team needs to know what the goal is for the job and how many crew days they got, how many crew hours, and they've got to have a tracking report of how well they did. And at the end of the month, you go through everybody's report, and we got the A's, B's, and C's, and you pay them based on that. And you give them their bonuses based on that. Who made money, who didn't? Who, did the, who got their change order signed, who didn't? Who kept the truck clean, who didn't? Who showed up on time and who didn't? You gotta have a scorecard, a tracking system. Because if you don't, everybody runs your business and you don't know what's happening every day. So we gotta have a clear picture of what you want and then plan to get there in a tracking system to make sure it's happening, right? So, so anyway, so the question is, as we sit here today, what do you want? And, uh, you know, I don't know where you are. Most companies grow for about four years, get to a certain size, one, two, three, four crews, whatever it is, and then we stop. We get stuck at the level producing the same results, and then we stay there forever. Now, I'm not saying you have to grow. I just want to get at best-in-class results. If you're already there, hey, thanks for hanging in here with me. But if you want to get any better, we've got to think about what do I have to do to get better results? This is what I call the leadership improvement gap, or the business owner improvement gap. I've got to do things different to get better results. I can't keep hoping as a strategy. Stra hope is not a strategy. It doesn't do anything. Hoping it gets better. Hoping your people show up. Hoping Joe actually makes you money. Well, Joe shouldn't work for you. It's time to get rid of Joe. You would never win the Super Bowl if Joe's your your center or your right guard or whatever, right? So think like a coach. What would a coach do if the team's not performing, right? We've got to have training or we've got to have meetings or we've got to have accountability or we've got to have a replacement, right? So think about what you want and how am I going to get there? Okay, so if I look at, oh, I can continue to do business or do things different, right? So if I look at a Fortune 500, you know, you read the Wall Street Journal occasionally and you see it and you know, every quarter they print out the, the results, right? So what's a CEO of a Fortune 500 focused on? Think about, it. why do they make so much money? Because they're hired by a company to deliver the results they want. So, so what do they focus on? The results. What results do business owners and presidents focus on? Think about it. You buy stock in this company, what do you want? You want return on investment, right? You want a dividend. So you want the stock to go up, the value of your business to grow. Now your CPAs, I don't know if there's any CPAs here. Any CPAs here? No? Nope. Well, your CPA will tell you to suck all the money out of the company, avoid taxes and all that, uh, which is great if you're using it to buy investments, personal investments, but if you're using it for trips and boats, you're not building a future, right? You're continuing, you have to continue to pay that lifestyle. So we want the value of your business and your personal net worth, if you're privately owned, to go up. We want quarterly earnings, profit, every month. Your, show me your P&L, send me your P&L every month. That's your report card if you're a good leader. If you should be the president of your company. Just show me your P&L. And it doesn't stand for pennies and leftovers, right? <laughs> it stands for profits. And if there's a loss on there, we got issues. Well, you don't understand my community. Yeah, I get it. I've been around the country. This year I've already been in Washington, D.C., uh, Pennsylvania, Reno, Nevada, uh, Chicago, and here I am in Vegas, right? So I've been a lot of places already, and I've met with clients this year, like 14 already, in the 101, and I see their P&Ls, and there's winners and losers. And the losers, we got a lot of work. The winners, hey, what else can we do to tweak a little more so you have better business, right? Better people. So we better make money, and we better grow. And if we don't grow, your overhead catches up over time, and your costs catch up, and your profit shrinks. Your profit will shrink if you don't grow. So you have to always be growing uh, at some level of growth. Now, I'm not saying you have to have exponential growth, but you always got to be doing a little more to keep up with inflation to pay your overhead and your people and get a raise and all that stuff for your crews and 
give them incentives to make, make them want to work. So I want you to think about what you spend your time on, estimates, bids, contracts, production, schedule, material, equipment, crews, project management, foreman, people, job costs, billings, change orders. You know, that's what we spend all our time on. We never look at our P&L. When's the last time you looked at your P&L? You know, I don't know if we did a survey here. I don't know you guys that well and gals, but uh, if we did a survey, how many of you could tell me what your sales for 2018, your sales, your gross profit, and your net profit were for 2018? Well, I'm not asking for your hands, but I guarantee there's some of you don't. Why? That's why you're in business. Well, I haven't met my CPA until April. So you're going to wait till April? I mean, that's why you're in business. You've got to know your numbers every month, right? And so that's what I want you to think about. What am I doing I should be doing? What I need to do to get better? So anyway, when you come to a fork in the road, you know, take it, right, Yogi Berra? Uh, so there's your road. Go right up the middle. I like that, with a big blade, right? Yeah, yeah. That'd be, that'd my, that'd be my son who's a skier. He'd go right through the trees, right? And they would come out the other end. I'd be broken down. So I'm going to take the same road I always go, or I'm going to take a new road. So profit, value, and growth. So I want you to think about where you are. I love this. This is a cartoon I love. Uh, the little kids, you know, it's kind of like your P&L. You know, he's holding the P&L. He's holding the, the, the report card. And he says, teacher, uh, you'll find my test results are a pretty good indication of your abilities as a leader. So just show me your P&L over the last couple of years. Just show me your job cost. Just show me what you bid it at versus what you're making. You know, if you bid it to make a 10 grand job, you bid it to make two grand, did you make two grand? Or did you only make 1,500 because there was, we don't, we don't know how to bid? Or we don't know how to run a crew? Or we cut our price too low? There's a reason we're not hitting our numbers, right? And it's usually because we're not focused on them. So as we sit here right now, just think about, you know, if we had another hour or two, we could really dig into your value, your profit, and your growth. What do you want? I have a phone call with a very long time customer of mine, a client. He's a big civil guy, does 14 million up in uh, I, uh, Dakotas. And he's a great guy and he's 64. He's trying to get out of his, you know, he's trying to figure out how to get out. His brother died and he's left with the whole company. They've had it 50 50. His brother died. The estate paid off that, whatever. But he's got this business and he's going, man, I'm tired of doing all the work. So he's 64. And, you know, I got a phone call with him uh, Thursday morning. He sent me a, he got an offer to buy. It's very low, but that's all there is. He says, man, I'm only 64. What if I live to 84? How am I gonna live on two, grand, two million? It's not gonna happen. I, I, I spend 300 a year after tax, 200 a year plus tax. You know, you gotta make 300 to get 200. How am I gonna do it? It's not enough money. I said, well, Doug, you can't quit working. Your business is only worth two million at the most. And uh, anyway, so that's the problem. We don't really focus on the future, we focus on now. So when's the best time? The, what, the best thing I did as a young guy, when I was in my mid-20s, I started buying duplexes. I worked for a company and I started buying duplexes. And thank God, because I started building my value, my net worth, improving my value of my personal business. And to this day, you know, if I could, I think, I could think back. I sold it and I bought another one. And I sold that and bought a fourplex and an eightplex and I bought an apartment complex and then I, then I bought industrial buildings and then I built some buildings and I kept them and now I've got two or three or four hundred tenants that pay me rent every month, all commercial. And uh, it all started because I had a vision, you know, of what I want. So I don't know what you want. Uh, and, if, and if you want to build a great business and turn over your kids, that's a great, va that's, that's an awesome vision. Great. Do it. If you want to turn over your employees, you know, a lot of guys say, well, I'll just sell it to my employees. Well, they have no money. So how are you gonna sell it to people who have no money? Well, you know, out of the profits. So you're gonna give them the profits to buy you out. Why don't you just close and sell everything? And you know, you don't have any value there. There's no value. So the average, you know, off the, off the subject, the average, average construction business sells for two times net profit. So if you make 200 grand, 400 grand, how long can you live on that? If you're in California, that's like an hour or two, and they got a new governor, it'll be worse. So anyway, think about, uh, you know, you're not in business to, you're not, you're in business to deliver what you want. So most companies tend to grow for a while, and you know, they start out and they grow, and then, but then there's a few more that grow to the next level, then a few more that grow to the next level, etc. So, you know, there's no right answer, but why do some companies just keep going? Well, the owner doesn't have a vision of comfort. 
When you're comfortable, you're actually in the, what I call the uncomfortable zone. Because when you get comfortable, you're doing too much yourself, you don't have any time, but you're comfortable not getting out of the pain zone. You're kind of uncomfortable in being in pain. You have no time, you have no freedom, so you continue to just work really hard until you finally look like me, right? 69, no hair, overweight, what else is new, right? But I can golf pretty good. So uh, anyway, I'm, in fact, I'm golfing tomorrow and Thursday, so that's great. Uh, but only one out of 19 or 20 actually keeps growing. And uh, so what do we have to do to make it happen? So we have to take a hard look at our potential. What's your potential? I know you're focused on the basement work, but what else could you do? Could you add any more services? You're already at the house. What else could you do? What's your potential? Do you have a bigger market you haven't attacked yet? Have you not, have you not gone after the, uh, uh, maybe the multifamily, the office buildings, the industrial buildings? Have you not seeked uh, referrals from structural engineers on major projects and do, get into bigger work? I mean, or you just kind of just like in your comfort zone, which is hard. It's hard. There's a lot of cheap competition, right? Pick up tuck, chuck trucks out there competing against you, right? Paying cash, no benefits, and, you know, pocketing the money. It's hard to compete when you're legit, right? So what's your potential? That's really what you want you to think about. And so we go out and we get some sales, and we focus on getting work, and we get some work, and then eventually, you know, value, profit, and growth comes out the other end, I hope. But, but really, if you really look at what's happening, we come in and do a deep dive in your company, and we, we interview all your employees, we interview your customers. You know, I come in and meet with you and your management team, your key people, and we talk confidentially. I pull them to the side and we say, what's working, what's not working? We realize something's shutting off your potential. The number one reason the potential is shut off for smaller contractors is what? The owner's holding it back. The owner's doing too much themselves. The owner won't let go. The owner won't hire. The owner won't trust. Everything's in the owner's head. There's no written systems. Everybody's just running around in circles. So that's the number one reason why we leak money. So we get stuck at a level of what the owner can do. Now, as the companies grow, the owner gets out of their own way. They hire a team, a project manager, an estimator, a salesperson, a general superintendent, general foreman, foreman, whatever you've got however you organize your company, and we step out, and we, my, my job changed from doer to manager. And now my job is to manage a great team, like a head coach. Those companies will continue to grow, and then the potential would be improving the systems, improving the sales, improving the branding, the marketing, uh, you know, the Facebook, the, uh, uh, the uh, Angie's List kind of promotions that we just saw, those kinds of things, get into the right places, uh, put that in place, and, and build a better business. That, it actually eventually goes on to autopilot. So that's kind of my theory, my theme. Uh, let's keep going here. Let's turn the page. Uh, the next page is page four. Notice how we're cranking through this 20 page handout here. I'm gonna do my best to skip around a little bit from now on. I just wanna give you a nice little intro. Okay, so steps to success. What do I want? I wanna build a great company. Okay, so what do I gotta do? First thing I had to do is I got to work for somebody and learn the business. It's kind of hard to start the business if I don't know what the business is all about and how to do good work. I got to know the work. It's kind of hard if I've never done a basement to start a basement uh, health repair company, right? Uh, waterproofing, health, uh, basement, drainage, all, all that stuff. Uh, it's really hard. Concrete's hard if you've never done it. I started a concrete company. I didn't, didn't know how to do it. Never swung a hammer out in the field. So I hired a really good guy to help me and I paid him a lot of money and worked out really well. But, but I started out, most of us start out as a worker of some sort, but we have the, we got bit by the e-bug. We start, we start a small business. Maybe it's me, myself, and uh, one or two people in a pickup truck or whatever we got. We get some work. We're the supervisor, boss, worker, supervisor, superintendent, project manager, foreman. We do most of the work ourselves. We're stuck in a truck all day, and we're not making a lot of money, but hey, it's better than working for somebody, right? So now the question is, where do we go from here? That's a decision. I'm not saying that's a bad position to be in. If you're comfortable there, quit whining about it. Just accept it. I got well, the guy that remodels my house. Uh, I don't know, Dunks, my wife and I. Well, actually, my wife has remodeled our house like eight times already. And uh, I've always said, okay, honey, you know, you know those guys, you know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, 
So the guy who does them, he's just the one man band and he's, he just wants to get paid for supervision fee and he's happy, he doesn't pay taxes, he doesn't you know, write him a check, I don't know what he does, hopefully I never get audited or whatever, or sued or something. Doesn't have insurance, so you know, I got workers comp. Anyway, so that's him, he's happy and I'm happy for Phil. Phil's, Phil's a good guy and I like him. So he's happy, I'm not gonna beat him up because he doesn't have a business plan. So what's next? Well, we wanna keep growing. So we say, okay, let's, let's go to the next level. Let's be a business owner. But unfortunately, most of us get stru stuck. We, do, we get a few, few more jobs, a few more customers. We become the hands-on supervisor manager. We have a few foremen, a few crews, but we're still micromanaging and controlling everything and, and there's no written systems. Everything's in our head. You know, we don't have any meetings. We don't have any structure. We don't have any, anything in writing. It's all like do it and then come out and scream at them, right? Until they do it right, then you leave, then you come back and you scream at them again and you, know, you go home and you complain you can't find any good help, right? Well, number one, they don't know what you want. They can't read your mind. There's no written systems. There's no trust, there's no training, no nothing, right? So anyway, we get stuck. So that's how most companies end up for the rest of their career. That's the four to six year point. Most companies get to a level where they're stuck. They've got two or three crews, I don't know, maybe doing two, three, four million, whatever they're doing in sales, and they're stuck. They don't know what to do. So what do we do? We gotta figure out what's next. So if we wanna to continue to grow, we have to put in some plans. We have to realize I, want to, I gotta build a good business, a professional business. I've gotta have a plan. The plan is what I call my blueprint. So I've, I've, you know, I've given you a template. We'll, we'll walk through some of it. We won't get through it all, but you know, this is my one page business plan. I've gotta have a vision. I've gotta have some core values. I gotta know what my top priorities are. I gotta have an org chart with a personnel plan. I've got to have my short-term action. I've got to have some investment goals. I've got to have some, some clear targets and things I need to work on, improve, fix. I need to have some personal targets. And then on the next page, I need to have a financial plan, a sales and business development plan, and I've got to have a meeting structure. So if I have that, I'm, you know, so I've got to get started on that. So how do I do that? So, so we've got to realize, you know, to get to the next level, I've got to make some investment in time, energy, and money. And, and I can't, if I'm working all the time, I don't have time to improve. So I gotta get some help. So most of us don't wanna hire anybody. We just hope it gets better. Well, it's not getting better unless you can delegate. So who are you gonna delegate to? The first thing I generally recommend is a uh, office manager, construction administrator. I'm assuming you've got somebody doing your books. I'm assuming that. Well, obviously that's first. We gotta have a good professional construction financial manager who understands construction and construction service contractors. Got to have somebody who knows how to do that and give you the right figures on a regular basis. Then we have to have someone to help us run the jobs, an assistant project manager. I call it a project construction administrator. That's, that's usually a price I can afford and it takes a lot of the details off my back. I have to delegate and give them tasks. So we'll talk about that in a minute. But that's how we do it. And, and then we start implementing the blueprint. We start growing, we start making more money because we're installing system, some structure, some professionalism, some scorecards, and we're building a team, right? I can't, I can't really jump into that. It's a slow process. I gotta hire short, short term, then long term, hire better, then eventually you'll hire general foreman, or you'll hire a project manager, or you'll hire a salesperson, or whatever you've got, right? And then, and then you continue to grow, right? And then eventually you're gonna end up with a great business, best in class business, high profits, management team run, structure, scorecards. Uh, you've got a great sales and marketing plan that's delivering you great customers, great clients. You're the best in your community. And of course, eventually your business works exactly the way you want it to work. And you're a business owner, stockholder, investor, not a hands-on do-it-all worker. And you're seeking opportunities in the community to make more money. And so I'm in the OB, I'm in the opportunity business. My business allows me to, uh, uh, creates opportunities for me to achieve my personal goals for business ownership. So I'm in the construction business, which allows me to meet people who have money. And if I meet people who have money and referring opportunities, they can refer me into other projects that get me other business, that get me into other markets. And eventually I own apartment buildings or shopping centers. I can't do that if I'm stuck in the basement all day. You know, head in the ditch, right? I'm not saying you're in the ditch, but 
you know, if you're stuck in a cave, you're not going to come out with very much. So we got to get out into the community and make it happen. And I can't get, have, I don't have any time if I'm back here to get out amongst them and looking for the future. Okay, so that's the normal steps. So what happens is most of us get stuck. We do too much ourselves. We, we control all the paperwork. You like that? Just show, you know, when I interview somebody, the first thing I do is I look at the back of their car or their truck. And if it's full of a bunch of junk and papers, I go, well, that's that guy. I'm not going to hire him. Uh, and so I'm stuck. You know, I'm still uh, calling on the cheap, cheap, low bid customers instead of the good customers. I'm not going after the hard work, which is hard to get in, hard, in, in, but there's low competition. And then I'm still, you know, using, you know, software and a, and a yellow pad and a pencil to do my bids. I'm, I don't have uh, one of these online software prac packages they got out here in the hall. I don't have a good uh, estimating software. I don't have, you know, I'm tr still tr limping along using QuickBooks, which really isn't set up for a service contractor that does a lot of $10,000 jobs. It's not really good for that. So we're, we got all the wrong tools, but we got them because they're cheap. And, uh, uh, you know, our crew is okay. You still got good old Joe on your crew who won't do the time cards on time, doesn't do it right, won't follow your rules, but you can't afford him to leave. So what do we do with good old Joe? Joe's probably a relative. Anybody have one of them working for you? And they're sitting right next to you? I know they are. Okay, so we've all been there, right? So we get stuck. All right, so we're stuck, right? So I play golf, you get stuck. When you get stuck, you take out a sandwich, which has a different sole than all the other clubs. All the other clubs have, a, have an up and down sole. The sandwich has a bounce sole, bounces through the sand, gets out. I can't keep doing the same thing, hoping it gets better if I get stuck, right? And so as I'm, as I'm going along, I gotta think about what I need to do to get to the next level. All right, so let me look at the time here and let me decide what to do next because uh, we got to finish on time uh, and we have a product showcase in, at, uh, in about 15, 20 minutes. Okay, so let me, uh, let me move into the action plan. I'm going to skip uh, just a little bit on that page and uh, I'm going to skip the journey, talk about all the stupid things we do. We kind of already went through that a little bit. But uh, uh, so let's stay on page four. And let's go down to uh, the bottom half of page four. And let me find my right place here somewhere. Where's my chart? Here we go. It's kind of a, everything, a bunch of stuff up here on this table. Uh, hang on. Okay, 34. Hello. Okay, there we go. Okay, so, you know, I've gone through it. I've tried to decide what to do. Uh, what should I do next? You know, where do I start? Where do I stop? You know, I'm trying to make all the decisions myself. Uh, you know, I'm working really hard. I just don't know what to do next. I send an email, help, like the one I just read you. What do I do next, George? And, uh, you know, you feel like you got your finger in the dam, putting out fires, uh, juggling all day, running in place. Uh, I drew myself a portrait a few years ago. Does that look like anybody here? That's a pretty good portrait. That's a contractor sub. The basement contractor self-portrait right there. All we need is some fertilizer. It'll grow even faster, right? We're, we're our own worst enemy, right? And so at first it's you. You're, you're happy. You're successful. You're doing really well. Then all of a sudden you get bigger and bigger. You hire some people. You start getting complaints. And that's all you get focused on, putting out fires all day because you're a little bigger. When it's just yourself, everything's perfect, right? And then, you know, you start juggling in your, if you're married, your kids and your spouse, and you're trying to figure it all out and go to their soccer practice. And you, you, you can't, I, don't, I don't even know what soccer's all about. I don't even know what they're doing. They're just running around circles with a ball. It's like, is that a game? I don't even know. It's like, but I'm supposed to go and watch my kid who hates soccer anyway. And uh, et cetera. I can't get there, you know, and burning the candle. I miss their, miss their event at school. And, uh, Still juggling, still trying to make it. So what am I going to do? So that's why I want you to think about what I want, what am I going to do, right? So, you know, you can go back to doing it all yourself. You can just sit and wait and hope it gets better. Well, maybe when. You ever said that? Go home at night. Well, maybe when the, this happens. Maybe when I, Joe shows up. Maybe when, maybe when I get that big job. Well, it never comes, right? So, uh, or you can sit and wait and hope it changes. Sit and wait for it to change. Which, you know, it never does. Economy goes up, economy goes down. But your business is the same. 
or you can make a decision to do something different. So that's kind of my encouragement today is to encourage you to try something different. We'll walk through a bunch of things over the next few minutes and implement a plan. So I'm gonna share with you my plan that works for contractors I work with over the next hour, hour and a half, whatever we got, with a break in the middle, and uh, talk about what we can do. So on the handout, I do have a test, which uh, we don't have time to take now. It's on page two. Uh, so what we're looking for on page two is a test. Does my business work the way I want it to? So I created this test and I've edited it over the last several years to try to get it honed in on, you know, what works, what doesn't work, what am I doing, what am I not doing? So answer it true or false. And then if you have a couple false answers, um, you know, that's an area for improvement. That, that needs to go on your fix it list on the right side of your page one. Those are, those are areas for improvement. You know, number four, do I have a written business plan with a clear vision, mission, values, strategies, targets, and goals? Um, number five, we have written operational project management, field production, and procedures for everyone to follow. Yes or no? Well, if you don't, that's an area for improvement. So next thing we have to do is take this list and prioritize it and start with one and two and three, right? And one year from now, maybe if you did 12 of them, you're 12 steps better than you were with the zero steps, right? So we have to make a decision to dedicate time to work on our company, right? If you've read the e-myth, you know, work on your business. So, uh, you know, I call it put on your hard hat uh, to improve your business. Okay, so let's keep going. Let's go to page five and look at the blueprint in action. Oops, I just bumped my own slide there. There we go. Got the test. And uh, all right, so on the page five, Kind of a picture of the blueprint. And you know, as we talk through it, think about what I should work on first. What, what I need to do first to get better. Where do I have weaknesses or holes or leaks in my business? Is it revenue? Is it production? Is it sales? Is it accounting, finance, operations? What is it here, right? So we go along and we grow our business with a vision and we get stuck. That's what normally happens. So we get to a level of comfort or uncomfort. I call it the uncomfort zone. We kind of hit a ceiling and we get stuck at a level. Why do we get stuck? There's something holding us back. What is holding us back? What's holding you back? We all get stuck. I got stuck at 50 million. I have a much, a very high pain threshold. You know, I'm a very driven entrepreneur. I want to keep going. I got stuck at 50 and I tried my best and I finally figured it out. Took me a few years, to, a few slap on the faces. I wish I had a business coach back when I was, you know, 45 helping me because I was trying to do it myself. It's hard to do things alone. You know, even Tiger Woods has a coach, right? Best in the world. So what's my roadblock? I need someone to help me see my roadblock and then, you know, realize there's something holding me back, what I call a growth barrier. Growth in profit, growth, growth in time, growth in efficiency production, whatever it is. So what do you think the typical barriers to business growth are? As we look around the room, what do you think's holding us back? Oops, what do you think of things that hold you back? Uh, what are some things that hold business owners and managers back from, yes, yes sir? Finding good help, okay. And training them. All right, so do you have a training program in place? Is it written down? No. So everybody knows it. So when you hire five more people, nobody knows it. So you don't have a written plan, a written program that they go through the steps to success. If you're a entry level, you do this, you gotta learn this, and you gotta learn this, and you gotta learn this, and along the way we get a raise, right? Okay, so great. So you have a, a, a good plan. So finding people, do uh, you have an incentive plan to uh, motivate your employees to bring on their friends? Yes. So how much do you pay for an incentive? 250 if they last two months. Double it, triple it, it's not enough. What city are you in? New Jersey, New Jersey. that's about an hour's rent. Well, 250, you need at least a thousand bucks. That's the number, 500 after three months, 500 after six months, that's the number. I'm not saying, I congratulate you, you've got a system in place. Do you have a continual ad, uh, advertisement, looking for help? 
So you, how, do you, how do they show up? How do you know? How do you attract them? What, what makes people want to come and apply? That want to work for the company? Yeah. So you have a good company. Okay, so... So, great. So you, so you have great company. So what your focus has been on is building a great place to work that attracts. Some of us in the room don't have that min, min, mantra. So what are they doing about attracting? You know, we've got to have, who in your companies is assigned with hiring and recruiting? Who in your company is the recruiting consultant on staff for your company? Who's in charge of recruiting in your company? Well, if it's the owner, it's not happening. Because you don't have any time for that, right? Now, maybe you give the last interview, but you shouldn't be the recruiting man or woman, right? You've got to delegate to a staff person. Because you're, you're making the business grow. You're selling. You're going out in the field, right? You don't have time to hire people, find people. You need to have, delegate that. So most of us don't do anything about the problem of hiring people, right? Uh, what are some other uh, things you think are holding you back? I, I, I get the people thing because it's number one in the world. People, there's enough people. They just aren't working for you or don't want to work for you. Your benefits, your attractiveness to retain employees. Uh, there's no delegation. You're micromanaging and screaming at them. I mean, there's a reason they don't, they're not attracted to your company. The number one reason is we're not seeking employees. We don't have an ad, nobody's in, in charge of hiring, and you know, I could spend a whole four hours on that. We don't have an incentive program, I congratulate you on that. 250 is a good number, but I would, I would bump it up, especially in New Jersey. Which part, you're near Atlantic City or? Central, so it might be a little, might be an okay number. Got a client in uh, Atlantic City, he's triple that. That's the only way he can get, he does house moving, house lifter. You know, he does what you guys do except above ground. <laughs> fixes leaky houses that are below ground. <laughs> anyway, okay, what else would be a fear? Uh, excuse me, uh, uh, a barrier. Yeah, the number, one, the number one barrier is fear. What are you afraid of? You're, not, you're afraid of trying a new kind of business. You're afraid of hiring. You're afraid of delegating. Yes, sir? In our, in our field, our, our biggest issue is rain. And rain. What do we do when it doesn't rain? That's what I would love. We would all love to hear. What do you do when it doesn't rain? You go do the work. I don't understand the problem. Drought. Like drought. 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 What's? Drought. drought. Oh, drought. Oh. Well, what if you're an earthwork contractor in uh, New Jersey and it snows all winter? What do you do with all the tractors and all the people? You send them home, right? So, I mean, they get used to it. I've got a client in uh, northern British Columbia. He only works in the summer. It's just that's how they set up their business. So, I mean, I, I don't have the answer, but... There's a lot of potential answers. Yeah, no, I get it. A drought, there's nobody's house is sinking, right? As soon as it rains, ah, phone rings. Yeah, so I, yeah, so, so fear is usually the number one. We don't want to try new kind of businesses. We don't want to try new customers. We don't want to hire anybody. We don't want to delegate anything. You know, sounds like you guys are sort of the next level. We've got that figured out, some of that. We all got issues, right? Everybody's got different issues. But it's fear. Usually it's fear. What are you afraid of? New customers, new product type, new, new pricing structures. Uh, uh, when it rains, do you, have, do you put rain in the budget? If it, is it in your contract? You know, I, I, I would take two hours to discuss, but let me look at your contract and your proposal and let's see what it says about rain and if we hit wet soil and all that. I, I don't know if you got that figured out. I'm sure you do. But uh, anyway, fear. So what do we fear? The number one indicator, uh, the number one problem is the inability to delegate and hire. Delegate and hire. So just because you got them doesn't mean you delegate. It's both. Uh, and build an accountable team. So, so we don't hire people to help us run the business. We hire people to do the work, which means I still got to run the business and run the jobs and schedule all the crews. So we need to hire somebody to help us do part of my job so I can grow the company bigger and better. But if I don't hire anybody who, you, you know, at a nice pay, you know, New Jersey, a good project manager is probably going to cost you 80 or 90 grand, right? If I'm not willing to invest 80 or 90 grand, I'm just stuck where I am. I'm afraid to hire. What if they don't work out? Well, what if they don't? It's already in trouble, right? You're already overworked and underpaid. So what do I have to do? So I have to learn how to do that, yeah. So anybody have any people issues you've thought about? Uh, everybody. Everybody. So we... 
We need a recruiting program. We need to invest in that. We need to have a Facebook page. We need to have an a, a, a incentive outreach program. You need to have a competition with your, with your field workers. If they bring somebody in, they get a check. We need to have a competition of who, who brings in the most for the quarter, gets a trip to Vegas next year to World of Concrete and your basement health meeting. Right, what, what were we going to say? Yeah, a thousand. He's paying a thousand. Oh man, that's a lot of money. Yeah, well, it's, what are you going to do when you have no workers? You're going to lose a thousand an hour, right? You got four guys on a crew. That's a thousand. I don't know what you guys per day or whatever it is, right? A thousand a day probably. Yeah. So it's a ref it's an incentive recruitment bonus. Right. Yeah. Just go on P UPS's website and apply for a job. They will give you $1,000. UPS will give you $1,000 to apply for a job. $1,000 UPS. UPS has full benefits, stock options. There's no, there's no holiday pay. There's no rain. Go home. It's 24-7. You work all year. You get stock options for basically the same money I would get working for you. Plus, I get a thousand bucks. Why would I work for you? Digging down all day under, uh, down in the hole. It's like so you got to you got to pay more. Okay, so that's one issue. All right, so we got to get hiring figured out, right? Who's number one hiring uh, pusher? It's got to be the owner. Has got to delegate it and push, right? Just like you push on sales and production, right? What's number three? Don't like to sell or market most. Owners were, are workers who don't like to sell. So they hire somebody else to do the sales for them, and then they don't manage the salespeople. I see that a lot. And we don't invest in marketing and sales what we should. I know most of you have a Facebook or a website or whatever, but you have video on your website, you have video email, do you have a, a PowerPoint display before and after? Uh, on your tablet, on, on, when you send an email. I mean, there's so many things. We could talk about that for the net rest of the day. But, you know, are you investing in getting customers? Are you taking your best customers to the ball game on a regular basis? Are you building relationships in exchange for referrals? Or are you just, you know, hoping the realtor keeps calling you, right? Or referring you. I mean, what are you doing to be proactive, right? I know you take out ads and you, hopefully they Google search you and all that. But, but everybody does that. What else do you do? All right, so we've got to have a sales program. And number three, we don't have any written systems. Everything's in our head. You know, they learn on the job. So it's kind of hard to grow a company if everything's in your head or not written down or you're supposed to learn on the job. Okay, so those are the biggest barriers. All right, so let's look at our business model. And let's talk about growing our business. So first thing we have to do is decide there's two parts to the, to the company. There's there's get work and there's do work. There's do work on the right and get work on the left. So I'm pretty good at getting the work built. I'm pretty good at that because that's where I, my background. You know, I don't know what your background was. Most of us know how to do this, right? We're experts in it. We've done it. We, we know it works, what doesn't work, what products work, what they don't, how deep to put the pipe and all that stuff. We're pretty good at that. What we don't know is how to improve sales. Most of us are good at doing and not, not the best at getting. So we spend all our time on the do, and we figure if we do good work, we'll get more work. So we, so we look at our org chart, and we realize I've got a whole bunch of gaps in my org chart, a whole bunch of holes that aren't filled, like recruiter, like training manager, like job cost tracking person, like construction administrator, like logistics person who's going to schedule all the crews every day. So all that's done by me, which means I can only do part of it, which means the other part doesn't get done. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you have all the boxes, but somebody's name's in each box. And if nobody's name's in each box, so somebody can have four boxes. Somebody could be the, uh, the invoice person, the logistics person, the customer uh, service person, and also the marketing coordinator. And then another person could be the office manager, 
the construction administrator, and maybe help in accounting. Every box got to be full for everything you guys need, or what do you got? It's not happening, right? Your, your potential is not being achieved, right? So we'll look at the org chart in a minute. But so we got to realize I've got problems, I need help, and I've got to start hiring, which is a risk, and investing a little money, well, I can't afford it. Well, then, you know, what do I got to do to afford an assistant? You know, you bring an assistant in part-time, 20 hours a week, cost you 1000 a month. I mean, you can't afford 1000 a month, so you don't have to do all the stuff you're currently doing. Why are you calling all the foremen every night and telling them where to go? Can't you just do a group text? Uh, virtual assistants, I don't think it works in our business. Um, you got all this paperwork you got to give them and go over and review and make sure you call this. I mean, I know it works, but I think it's, I'd, I want someone in my office. I want a warm body I can talk to, and that's for me. I, it's up to you. I do have coach, other coaches I, I know have virtual assistants, but I don't have any assistant work. It's just me and me, right? You know, maybe an invoice or two to go out, right? But, uh, but uh, I don't think on a very hands-on business, because you're going to call them in the morning and talk to them. I don't think, you need to talk to them all the time, right? Hey, call Joe and tell him the material's on the way. Hey, would you call the wholesale house and make sure the, the stuff shipped out? Who, check on the gravel delivery. Make sure it's coming, right? You could de delegate all that, right? Instead of you worrying about it. Now, if someone's virtual, now you got to call them to call them. Just tell somebody, right? Anyway, I don't know. That's my opinion. But uh, now, in certain things, they might be able to do your bookkeeping. Because that can be all online on a group uh, software deal. Okay, uh, and then we got to get work. Okay, so, so the plan is we got to have a plan. So that's what I call my blueprint. And then we have to have uh, uh, an organizational structure that, like we just discussed, with all the boxes laid out and someone's name's got to go in all the boxes or else your name's in them, which means, you know, it's not going to be your top priority, all the little things like updating the website. Um, and then uh, for each position, we have to have a clear description of what their job is, job description, what they must do. What do I, wanna, what do I want my foreman to do every day? You know, throw some, what, do, what do you want your foreman to do every day? Just throw something out. Every day, you want your foreman to do what? Job status, daily report, fill out the time cards with the right cost codes, right? Check in with a customer before and after they leave the site, right? So do they all know that? Do they have a list or is it just assumed? Okay, so it's got to be written. It's got to be a clear position description, right? So if you don't have that, it's all in your head and then you're always checking in and following up. All right, next, uh, in order for us to get over to the get more work side of the business, we have to learn how to delegate and let go. And uh, so the best way to do that was, was a series of meetings. I want to meet with all my foremen once a week, all my crew leaders once a week, and I want to go through their jobs. That way I don't have to call them and deal with them all the time. I've got, I can see them all at once, leverage my time, and get it over with. And I can meet with all my sales guys every Monday or whatever day, if you have more than one salesperson or if it's you and whatever. And you go through, who's on, where are the leads? How are we doing? When's it coming in? Do we need a price? When's it coming? And we put it on a schedule and we make sure it happens, right? Rather than call the guy all day and he knocks on your door all day. Uh, or we, uh, we set up a series of systems. That's the startup list and the closeout list. Etc. and how to bill and how to invoice and uh, and then we need a scorecard for everybody who works for you you know production goals profit goals uh, quality control goals callbacks punch list customer satisfaction you know we need scorecards for, for so everybody knows how well they're doing it's kind of hard to play a game unless you know the score you guys all watched the football game the other night what happened in the last three minutes it's like 37 touchdowns right why Looking at the scoreboard, and the time's running out, and the Super Bowl's in two weeks, and they only got one more chance, right? But if I didn't have a scoreboard, do you think the game would be the same? Do you think if there was no score in football, anybody would care? How about no score on your crew? Nobody. Yeah, like the Pro Bowl. Good point. How about the Pro Basketball, 156 to 142, you know? Yeah, but how about your crew when the foreman doesn't know what his goal is? You know, it's the same thing. I got to have a job startup meeting where we meet with the foreman, with the sales guy, and we go over the issues, and we, and we maybe go out to the site, whatever, and we, we lay out how many days we have, how many bolts, how many this, how many that, uh, you know, what's in the budget, what do we, what do we got to make sure we have before we get there so we don't have to go to Home Depot twice a day, et cetera, right? 
Okay, and then, you know, obviously I gotta have a wealth building plan and a personal development plan to make it happen. Okay, so over on the sales side, get work side, I've got, you know, I gotta get over there and help out. I gotta focus on growing the business. I gotta have a marketing plan, a sales plan, a business development plan, and I've gotta have a, a, a branding plan to differentiate my company from everybody else out on the street. Okay, so that's kind of the plan. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna do right now. So let me just get to the last slide here and then, okay, so, so we'll, we're gonna take different pieces of the plan uh, after our break. We have a break, we have a, a guest uh, presenter from uh, uh, one of your suppliers. And then I'll get up and we'll, we'll kind of randomly, you know, discuss which, uh, which tactic you wanna talk about, okay? All right, see you in a few minutes.